It's Sunday evening and it is the end of a pretty incredible weekend and I'm sitting here with my friend in my house here in Daytona Beach, Florida, my friend Dan Lorney, <laughs> all the way from Corby, England. Yep, that's right. And what's even more fascinating about the fact that you're sitting in my house right now is the fact that you and I really only met a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, pretty much. It hasn't been yeah, that long. Uh, I say a month, really? Maybe a month. Mm -hmm. About a month, yeah. And he got on an airplane and he came to see us. So, man, I appreciate no, you no. coming to visit us in Daytona. I appreciate you sending me out. That's been crazy. It's been a really good weekend. It's but cool. Now, yeah. now, yeah. truth be told, you didn't come j to the United States just to see me. No. You already had a trip planned. Yeah, I was already out in the U.S. for a couple of weeks. And then uh, Dave hit me up and was like, do you want to come out to Daytona to come ride? And I was like, of course, any day. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll be down for that. And, had this great opportunity of doing all this crazy stuff. And what's funny is most of the time our winters here are pretty dry, but for some reason we've had rain all weekend long. I reckon I brought it with me. He brought it. Yeah. He brought it with him I'm from, from the UK. <laughs> from Corby. Tell us a little bit about Corby because most of my viewers are scooter riders, mm -hmm. and all of them are familiar with Adrenaline Alley. Yep. It's kind of like Mecca for scootering, it seems, yeah. these days. Tell us about Corby. So it's the biggest skate park in Europe. In Europe, not just the UK. Yeah, in, in Europe. I'm pretty sure it's the largest. 120,000 wow. square feet, I believe. And uh, yeah, I've lived there for the last two years, and just since then, just progressed massively with my riding. More two and a half years now, but yeah, I don't know. Since I moved there, I just, I ended up getting a job there, and riding like almost every single day and we have so many skate parks around that area as well so it's not just riding the indoor we can ride another indoor say 45 minutes away and yeah it's good we have so many opportunities to ride and stuff over there. What's fascinating to me is when I see videos of these guys riding that park for the most part you see a lot of the clips from the same space yeah that huge box jump with mm -hmm. a the resi, resi ramp yeah, right yeah but you're telling me that there's a ton more park oh, there. Oh yeah that's just like two percent of what you see on like there's so much more to that skate park than people know like they get there and they're like well i didn't even know this was here there's still ramps that were there from when it first even opened that are still like the same ramps from like 10 15 years ago which is crazy that's but, right it's been there that long yeah it's been there for uh, i think 15 years wow yeah and it started off as like one building and then just expanded and expanded and now it is what it is today and yeah. i think it's just gonna get bigger and bigger now, we were doing a little trivia at Jericho today. If you had the privilege of joining us at Jericho Skate Park, Dan was there with us, and we had a, we had a blast. And we had about four hours of, of dry ramps, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. And so there was a lot of ride time. It was a lot of fun. And then we came inside and did some trivia, some yep. Dan trivia. <laughs> yeah. 
And one of the things that you said that was fascinating to me was that for five years, mm -hmm. you never had a local skate park. Never. I had to either wait till the weekend or ride one day a week with my friend who would like his sister had, she had swimming lessons at the place we had a local skate park so she would go do that for a couple of hours and we would ride for those two hours like once a week basically so that's wild it took me at least five years until I got my first local skate park which was Corby where I had a skate park where I actually lived and even for that first I think it was the first year and a half in Corby I still couldn't even ride all the time because my mum didn't want to drive back and forth take me to the skate park and so so until I dropped past my driving test when I was 17 in November 2016. Yeah, because you're 19 now. Yeah. So, yeah, so 2016, I passed my driving test, and then since then, that's given me the privilege of being able to ride every single day. Now, you're you're a pro scooter rider for Fusion Scooters. Mm -hmm. How long have you been on the Fusion Pro Team? Uh, I joined Fusion in February, and then... February of this year? Yeah, 27, uh, 2018, sorry. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure they just... They just moved me up to pro after I released my first edit. So. And what's cool is he told me that you're the very you're the first UK fusion scooter rider, first international rider that's outside of America. They hit me up first, and I went had a meeting with them out in Vegas and just talked business with them. Yeah, from then on, we just kept, uh, kept in contact over the months, and then in February I announced that I joined Fusion. Right on. Person. That's super rad. And yeah. So what's fascinating to me, you've been riding a scooter now for how many years was it you told me? Seven and a half-ish. Coming up to eight in, in next year, May time. We'll so almost eight years of scooters, uh -huh. five year, at least five years of that, you didn't have a local skate park, mm. and yet you are a professional scooter rider. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. It's because I stuck at it, and I saw the potential in it, and saw where it could take me. Like... The amount of people I grew up riding with who don't ride to this day because they didn't believe in themselves, I guess, or just didn't want to carry on in the sport. And now look at me, like traveling all around America, all around Europe and stuff, just riding the scooter and meeting all all these crazy people. So it's really good. That's what I wanted to get out of it, and this is what I'm doing. So what is it in you that made you decide that I I want to be a professional scooter rider? Is that something that you ever sought out? You just grow up watching all these pro riders and all these big YouTube videos. Like some of my idols now are like still some of the biggest riders, but the younger generation don't know who they are because they're sort of like behind the scenes now, I guess. But I don't know. Just looking up to all the pro riders, I like as I was growing up as a kid, being in the position most younger riders are in now. Like it motivated me to be like that and wanted to do most of that kind of stuff and be like, I want a pro sponsor and I'm gonna work like until I get it. So that's cool, man. And you know what's what's cool to me is in our electronic age, you know, you and I can have a, a, an instant conversation online mm -hmm. through our, our cell phones, yeah, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah. And you had somebody reach out to you from the United States mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, we'd like you to come ride for our scooter company." When they reached out to you, did they tell you how they found you? Like, was it on YouTube? Was it on Instagram? How did yes. they find you? So they actually found me through like my YouTube channel and. Because I was still making content for my YouTube channel at the time, I wasn't really focusing on myself as a rider. I was just kind of producing content, trying to promote scooter, and just getting all my friends to be able to have a ride and film and stuff, and just look back at those videos as memories. And then this guy called David hit me up and was like, "Yo, we've seen your videos. Is there any way we could send you a scooter to test out?" And I was like, <laughs> "Nah, I, nah, yeah. don't send me a scooter. I'm good." Yeah, it was like at the time I already had a sponsor, and I was like okay I mean you can just send me one out and we'll see how it goes and I tested it out I liked it went and I had the meeting with them like a month after that and yeah just took took things from there because I I got to see all the new product when I had a meeting with them so they showed me all the stuff that hadn't been released yet that's cool and I was like wow if they are making these scooters like now then right people are going to want to buy this stuff because this is like good quality product who were you riding with before you came to Fusion uh, a company called Maui and Sons which is as I was talking to you, it's big in America for surfing and stuff. I yeah. Believe. yeah, yeah. And then in Europe, they actually had scooters, like a scooter team that was basically a group of all my like close friends and my like my team manager was like one of my close friends now. So that's so wild, man! I didn't even know Maui and Sons <laughs> made scooters. Yeah. They had them in America as well. I was speaking to the, like one of the owners, and I was saying they wasn't success like successful in America, so they just 
stop selling them. I think mindset wise, you know, here in the States, we associate Maui and Sons with surfing. Yeah, and it's, skateboarding. It's synonymous with those kinds of things. So scootering just wasn't a fit here, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't think it would have fit with the whole skateboarding scene, but I mean, there's skateboarders who rode for the company in America who followed me on Instagram while I was over in the UK riding for that company because they thought, oh, wow, this is cool. Like, people are doing their stuff on scooters, which is really cool to see. Because- you guys do some radical stuff. And, and if you guys have not seen Dan, you need to check him out. You can follow, you're not actively YouTubing anymore, right? Mm, not anymore. But you are very active on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And you're constantly posting content yep. and you're constantly posting little edits and so forth. All the time. And so you need to check out Dan on Instagram. You can check him out. Uh, you can click the link there. I have his link down below. He's DXN Lorney. Mm-hmm. You can check him out, man. He's a good dude. I can, I can profess for the fact that he's just good people. He's a good guy to hang out mm-hmm. with. He's fun. He um, he loves baked beans. I don't like baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> you won't ever catch me eating baked beans in my life. <laughs> I hate those. I had them one time and I won't ever have them again. <laughs> if you don't know anything about English culture, and listen, I don't know, I don't know Jack about English <laughs> culture, but one of the things I do know is that baked beans is like a traditional English breakfast item, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Here in the United States, thinking about baked beans for breakfast makes me want to barf but people over there eat that pretty regularly yeah every day people would have baked beans on toast and you said they put it on toast which is which is kind of weird it's normal for me well i I don't eat it but it's normal to hear that people are eating that stuff so So, if you want to do if you want to send dan a gift just send him some baked beans please do not send me any baked beans or peanut butter for that matter (laughs) oh that's right he doesn't like peanut butter which i just found that out i love peanut butter I took you for some frozen custard. Mm-hmm. You didn't Never even know what you didn't even know what frozen custard was. Not a clue. What'd you think? Like the warm yellow custard you'd get frozen. I'd be like, why would you want to eat that? <laughs> <laughs> why are people eating frozen custard? That's the weirdest thing, but it's actually really nice. I enjoy it. You like it? Yeah, it's good it's really, stuff. It's really good. It's really one good. of my favorites. I tried to get him to eat my peanut butter mountain from Ritter's, but he just he I'm wasn't not having any of that. He wasn't mm-hmm. into it. When you bring your girlfriend, Elizabeth, to come mm-hmm. um, hang out with us next time you come, mm-hmm. then... Uh, you two can... We, yeah, <laughs> go away. Leave the peanut butter. I ain't going to be any of you guys. <laughs> Listen, I got you, Elizabeth. So when you come, I know the place to take you for some peanut butter. And if you are a peanut butter fanatic like me, go buy some whipped peanut butter. That stuff is, is awesome. <laughs> I highly recommend it. So... What is your favorite thing about you? You've actually told me that you would hope to come live in America at some point. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. What is your favorite thing about America? What do you What do you like about it here? There's so much more potential here, like as as well as coming as like a international to a different country. And I don't know. There's just so much more potential, and the people are really nice. There's more things to do, and especially growing up in a place where. There isn't a lot to do. You're bored every night. You like just the only thing you can do is ride. But especially with my girlfriend being over here as well, is another motivational thing to be over here for. But I don't know. I just want to be over here. The weather's good. The weather's cold. You can go snowboarding in the winter. You can do more stuff over here than you can back home. And I've spent my whole like life growing up in England, so I'm up for a change. Like I don't want to live there the whole life. Like no. I'm up for traveling. <laughs> I love traveling and stuff. So. I think we take it for granted here in America, you know, that we live in such a such a large and diverse country with so many different things and so many different opportunities. So I want to tell you guys that, you know, look at a guy like Dan, who grew up in a place with no local skate park. He found a scooter. Mm-hmm. He rode that scooter and he applied himself to it. And even though he didn't have the resources around him to accomplish what he's accomplished today. He still applied himself to it and decided, listen, this is worth it. Mm -hmm. 100%. And he invested himself in that, and look where he is today. He's he's sitting in a different country. He came over for a professional visit to hang out with you guys. And, and, you know, it it just goes to show you that if you take advantage of what you have, and you apply yourself to anything that you want to do. It can be done. You can really you can really do anything that you put your mind to. Patience is the number one thing in, in life, I reckon, because six, seven years, like 
I was just in a, like a beginner scooter rider and now like seven or eight years down the line. You're like, killing it. I'm out in America, like not even paid because Dave's paid for me to come out here and stuff and it's just been like incredible. So if you stick at it, patience is the number one thing to keep at because if you don't have the patience then it's going to be a lot harder because you're just going to give up and lose motivation a lot quicker. But just, it was a gut feeling. It was like, I know I can do it one day, but the day will come when it's right. Like, don't get me wrong, there's been times where I've been wanting to be like, you know what, I don't want to ride anymore. It's not going to happen. Sure, I have we to are focus on my life. But I mean, everyone goes through that. Like, that happens to all of my friends. Yeah. All of my close friends have been like, you take a month off, you change your style, you, you change street, you go to park, you switch between them both. And now, like, Every time I ride, I, like every day I change up, so it'll be like one day I'll ride park, one day I'll ride street, one day I'll ride like a foam pit or something, you know, just change it up and make the most of it. And then that, that way it doesn't get boring. You find a way for it to be fun for you. Right on. So. Well, dude, I appreciate you coming out and spending uh, the weekend with me. me. And, uh, and Elizabeth, I appreciate you <laughs> sharing him with us for a couple of days. I know you guys don't get to spend a lot of quality time together, mm -hmm. but uh, I appreciate you letting him do that. So, dude, I, I love you, man. Thank you so <laughs> thank much you, for coming thank out, you. man. Thanks for and having me. I hope that we will see you again very soon. Oh, definitely. I'll be back for sure. All right, dude. 100%. I love you guys. God bless. Bye. Perfect.